Okay, so I wasn't actually going to uh, record me doing any more of these. I was going to uh, just post the results, pretty much. But uh, the next one that I picked to do was uh, Jet Set Willy. Um, now, if you own this cassette, you probably remember that it came with one of these. Software protection card. And on the back of that, you have a grid with... Um, with thousands of, uh, of different coloured blocks and um, basically it's a form of protection and when you load the tape up it asks you to refer to one of these points on the grid and you have to enter the colour and obviously if you didn't have this card you couldn't play the game because these were quite hard to duplicate in the 80s uh, no phone cameras, no colour printers, things like that so it was quite effective at the time um, so what I'm going to try and do is load up this game um, and make a dump of it but after the protection screen because obviously on my new copy I don't want to be uh, messing around having to input input a uh, protection uh, cord so let's load this up and see what we can find okay that was bizarre. I haven't loaded this for a while, but uh, the tape actually clipped off right at the very moment the uh, the loading seems to finish. So I get the impression that um, the game had already finished loading and it was waiting for the tape to uh, to click off because obviously it, it can detect when the motor's running on the cassette player. So it was just waiting for that before it would uh, actually start. Yeah, okay. All right then. So what are we up to on the counter? Original tape, just coming up on 81. So, just gonna write that down. So 81 original counter. So, press any key to start. So what we're gonna see now, obviously, is the, uh, is the protection screen. So this is where you'd normally enter your card. So you can look at this, uh, look at this card and put the uh, corresponding colors in. Um, it doesn't actually even tell you how to do it. I, I do remember that you use the uh, the number keys one, two, three, and four to choose the correct colours. But if you had a black and white TV like I used to have in my bedroom back in the eighties, this would be very difficult because you can't make out which one's which. You'd have to guess. Um, and I think it only gives you like three tries at doing it as well. And if you get it wrong, it either um, locks up the machine or resets. I don't remember. But anyway, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to be bothering doing that. I'm going to freeze it now and uh, and create a dump. I think. Let's just have a look. So we're held to the instruction 37FC. Let's just um, let's just have a a nose at what's going on there. 37FC. See if we see anything interesting. Okay. So you can see here the code where it's actually uh, storing the text into code at grid location, etc. So what was it? 37FC, let's have a look. I'm going to try, I'm just going to try this. I may have to load the game again, but I'm going to set a freeze point there. And then I'm going to deliberately get, oops, I'm going to deliberately uh, put an incorrect code in. Let's see what happens. Sorry, try again. Oh. Yeah, no, I need to try it again then. <laughs> so where where are we at? Three C six A. Ah, oh, I see what's happening there. Yeah. No, it must just leave us on that screen then. Three C six A. Which is here, um, yeah. 
storing um, storing values in the um, DR21 and DR20. That's the screen and border. That must be the red colours that it's set. And basically, it's just stuck in a loop there. So that's not that uh, command that I gave earlier wasn't the correct one. So let me just uh, three, two, four, and B. No. Need to D5. Ah, right. Yeah, it's changes back, so that's no good. So the other, the other suspected one was zero FA zero. Let me just check see if make sure that hasn't changed. So it was a three C four B. Yeah. Let's just try going there. See what happens. Zero FA. Uh -huh. My TV picture isn't giving out a very good sound, my TV cable. There we go. Ugh. Okay, so I just had to take a slight intermission there while I swapped my TV cable around. The other one literally was falling apart, so I lost the picture at the back end of, uh, of that last recording. Never mind, I'm back here now. So I'm ready to go ahead and make the dump now. I've already got the addresses uh, that I need, so I can uh, I can skip all this. And we'll go on and make the dump. Let me first check. Disable the wrong space, and then we'll... Do a save. So it gets three hundred. Okay. And then just to double check what the say. Oh F L. Give that a try. Oh, there we go. <laughs> In addition to coming with the software protection card. I just remembered that um, there's actually quite a lecture on the uh, on the scrolling text that we just had across the bottom there, um, and I'm guessing it's going to be hidden in here somewhere. And that, yeah, there we are. I've had a big lecture about uh, piracy, which I always found quite amusing. So software projects, which really. Uh, the software house that that released this game, they uh, they really had to think about piracy even back then. If you are a pirate, if you make copies of commercial programs for anything other than purely backup purposes, then you are a thief. Pretty strong words. I always thought it quite fun as well. You could go in and change this, make it anything you want. Seems like if you're a pirate, if you're a wizard, Let's see if that sticks. Now, I don't know if you notice or not, the music actually sounds a little bit different. There's part of the music missing, and that's either because uh, of my cable not being in right, because I've just swapped it over, um, or it's because the actual replay is frozen and restored while the music was already playing, which, uh, which, which is quite possible, which is one of the reasons that I'm not keen on making uh, backup copies using the, the built-in freezer backup. There we go, if you are a wizard. <laughs> uh, 
easily amused. Right, let's uh, let's give this a go. Okay, finally. I'm just going to work out the. Uh... So I've got nothing on 4096F, which is obviously 15, 15 times 16, and then 10 times 16. Ah, that's not right. 256 plus 160. 3840 plus 160. Alright, calculations are correct. 4000, okay, it's just 4000. That did work, but I pressed enter, I held the key down too long. Ah, I still need to check that music, make sure the. Uh, make sure none of the music data has been destroyed now that I've noticed it. So to get back to the title screen, I don't. Oh, you can do it. Yeah, there we go. So part of that music was missing because the <clears throat> I'm guessing what happens is when you when the freezer hits, the um, the SID has already received the instructions for that music and it's not getting restored again when the uh, when the when the actual replay unfreezes. Just walk through a few rooms, make sure I've not lost any data. Oops. Looks good to me. Ooh. One of my favourite things about this game was uh, going around and finding places where you can do things like this. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Okay, so I can get that to the PC, get it crunched, and come back and try and uh, write that back to cassette using gyro speed. Okay, so I've got that uh, compressed extra miser now, and here we've got jswnew.prg. Should have renamed that really, but I forgot. So let's go with gyro speed now. Then leaving a gap between them of one block, one tick on the counter. So now I'll put my cassette player back in. And set to tape. Press spare. Make sure we've got zero on the counter.
22. Wow. That's impressive. Let's, let's give it a go. Original cassette, 81 on the counter. New copy, 22. Halfway there already. Uh, plotted. There you go, straight into the main screen, main menu screen. No entering a code from uh, from a card. And we can start straight up. There we go. Um, for practical reasons, I'm not going to record myself doing every single uh, game that I add to this tape, but I might do another one or two on the uh, on the emulator just so I can capture uh, capture what exactly I'm doing. It might be a bit easier for you to see. <laughs> Okay, so the next one I was just trying was the Great Gianna Sisters. Um, now this is the second time I've had to attempt loading it because uh, the first time while well, I was trying to catch a, a good point to freeze the game, the program, there, there was no time. It went straight from this loading screen to being banged straight in the game. Um, as soon as the tape finishes going the game's loaded straight up, there's no way I can catch it right at that second. So I'm going to have to run this twice um, in about another, what are we up to? Around about 40 on the clock, it went up to about 75, something like that. So in about another 10 clicks, I'm going to freeze it and see if I can find the program starting address that way. Uh, and then we'll reload it and see if I can get it to, see if I can dump it and start start it once I've got the program start address correct. So we'll see what happens. It's coming up on 50 ticks now, so. Hmm. Nope, still good. Okay, here it goes. Right. Okay. Might as well stop the tape now, there's no way it's going to resume. So again, we're just going to search lower areas of memory for the uh, for the instruction that re-enables re the ROMs. Okay, and two straight up, let's have a look. Trying there. R1A1, jump to A7A. Damn pen isn't working. Ok. 
Okay, let's have a look at this one. Okay, jump eight oh eight two oh four oh four three D. Okay, well, it'll take a miracle, but let's just see what happens when I restart. I'll be amazed if this actually goes ahead and loads the program. No. As I suspected, that's what happens when you freeze programs during loading. Doesn't like it. Okay, second load. Just gonna let the should game should be starting any second, so I'm just gonna let it go. There we go. Stop at time now. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, let's disable the ROMs. Let's say DDS Great Dialysis this. Okay, I'll just test what I suspect was the start address, which is 0820. There we go. Make sure the game starts up correctly. Okay. This is probably the last one that I'll I'll do in in full from start to finish because um, it's taken quite some time. So I'm going to start doing them in 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 a batch. I'll be loading up several games, finding the finding the correct addresses, and dumping them all one after another, and just making notes of of the start address, and then I can get them compressed all in all in one batch, and then. Uh, and then I can come back and record them one after the other onto the cassette using gyro speed. So I think next uh, from this box set, the Magnificent Seven, we've got Head Over Heels. I'll definitely have that one on there. Frankie Goes to Hollywood. No, it was all right. Arkanoid, Whizball, Yar Kung Fu, definitely. So there's a good four from this set that I'll uh, I'll put onto my. Uh, Onto my mixtape as well. Okay, what we're at one eight two zero. Ah, that's 
32, isn't it? 2048 plus 32. So I it. That's right, that's two or eight zero. There we go. Also comes in handy finding the start addresses. Then you can uh, if you find cheats, porks or anything like that, um, you can you can reset the machine and then you've got you've got the address uh, that you can use to get back in there. Um, anytime you want. It's always uh, it's always good to know. Okay, so that took 76 on the original counter. Let's see what uh, let's see what gyro speed um, exomizes version does. Just had to mention the, the exomize and gyro speed copy. 26 on the timer. Not the timer. Counter. The original was 76. That's like a third of the of the amount of space. That's incredible. <laughs>